Are you puzzled about how a business can record expenses before paying for them or report income without receiving cash? If so, stick around because in this video we are diving into the world of accrual accounting, the method mandatory by GAAP that makes all of this possible. Hi there, I am Juliette, the creator of Concierge CPA, and in this video I will present the following. The fundamentals of accrual accounting and GAAP, a comparison with the cash accounting method, practical applications in the real world, and the benefits and challenges of the accrual accounting method. By the end of this video, you will not just understand what accrual accounting is, but see it in action through real world examples. So let's get started. First off, what is accrual accounting? In the world of business, Keeping track of money isn't just about what's in the bank. Let's dive into the fundamentals of accrual accounting and see how it plays a crucial role. Accrual accounting is a method of accounting where transactions are recorded when they occur, not necessarily when cash is exchanged. This means revenues are recognized when earned and expenses are recorded when incurred, regardless of the cash flow, in other words regardless of when the money is actually received or paid. Think of it like this. If you order a coffee at your favorite coffee shop and pay cash, it's a cash transaction. Simple, right? Now imagine you own a coffee shop. You order cleaning supplies for the coffee machines on credit to be paid later. That's where the accrual accounting comes in. You recognize the expense when you receive the supplies, not when you pay for them. When you place the order and receive the supplies, your journal entry will look like this. You debit cleaning supplies expense for $200 and you credit your account's payable account for $200. The debit to cleaning supplies represents the expense incurred and the credit to accounts payable represents the obligation to pay in the future. In this example, your expense is recorded before the cash is paid. This is accrual accounting. Accrual accounting differs from cash accounting, which records transactions only when cash changes hands. For example, in the previous coffee shop scenario, if we apply the cash accounting method, there will be no journal entry when you order the cleaning supplies on credit and no journal entry when you receive and use the supplies. You will only recognize the expense when you pay for it. Imagine you buy and use the supplies in January and you pay for them in March. Under the cash accounting method, your journal entry will be recorded in March when the cash is paid. As follows, in March, you would debit cleaning supplies for $200 and you will credit your cash for $200. But see how different the timing in accounting is under the accrual accounting method. Under the accrual accounting method, you recorded the expense and the liability when you purchased and used the supplies in January, you debited your cleaning supplies expense for $200 and your account payable was credited for $200. In March, when you pay for the supplies, your journal entry only affects the balance sheet, not the income statement. You debit accounts payable to decrease the liability reflecting the payment obligation being fulfilled. And you credit your cash to decrease the cash account by the payment you made. The accrual basis matches the expense of the coffee machine cleaning supplies to the revenue the machine helped generate in the month of January, as opposed to the cash method where the revenue is in January and the expense would be recorded in March. Remember my video on accounting principles? One of the key accounting concepts under GAAP is the matching principle. The matching principle is a fundamental accounting concept that underpins the accrual accounting system. This principle dictates that companies should report expenses in the same period as the revenue they help generate, ensuring that financial statements accurately reflect the company's financial performance within a specific time frame. So again, in accrual accounting, revenues are recognized when they are earned, not necessarily when cash is received. And expenses are recognized when they are incurred, not necessarily when they are paid. GAAP requires accrual accounting because it provides a more accurate representation of a company's financial position and performance. By recording transactions when they occur, it offers a clearer insight into a company's operations. Now that we understand what accrual accounting is and the logic behind it, let's see it in action with some great common transactions examples. First example, sales on credit. Imagine your company sells 
$10,000 worth of goods to a customer on credit in June. Under accrual accounting, you will record this $10,000 as revenue in June, even though the cash might not be received until July. In June, when the sale is made, you will debit your accounts receivable for $10,000 and you will credit your sales revenue for $10,000. This ensures that the revenue is matched with the period in which the sales occurred. Any direct cost incurred to make the sale, such as cost of goods sold, are also recorded in June. This ensures that the revenue from the sale and the expenses related to that sale are matched in the same time period, reflecting the actual profitability from the transaction. To record this transaction, you debit accounts receivable for $10,000 and you credit your sale revenue for $10,000. So you will also record the second journal entry in June, which would be to debit cost of goods sold, which is your expense, and you would credit your inventory. Second example prepaid rent. Our second example is for a prepaid. Let's see how we can apply accrual accounting to record prepaid rent. When a business pays in December for the next year's rent, it is making a prepayment for a future expense. This transaction is handled in two parts within the accounting records to ensure adherence to the accrual accounting principles and the matching principle. Here's how it is recorded. In December, when the payment is made, you will record the following journal entry. You will debit your prepaid rent for $12,000 and you will credit your cash for $12,000. This decreases the cash account reflecting the outflow of cash and the debit increases the prepaid rent asset account reflecting the advance payment for rent. This journal entry records the prepayment as an asset recognizing that the payment provides a future economic benefit, namely the use of this rental space for the next 12 months. Then, starting in January and continuing each month through the year, the following entry is made. You will debit your rent expense for $1,000 and you will credit your prepaid rent for $1,000. The debit increases the rent expense account, reflecting the cost of occupying the space for the month. The credits decrease the prepaid rent asset account, reflecting the consumption of the prepayment. Each monthly entry allocates a portion of the prepaid rent to expense, matching the rent cost with the period it benefits. This process ensures that financial statements accurately reflect monthly expenses and adhere to the accrual basis of accounting and the matching principle, which require that expenses be recognized in the period they are incurred to generate the revenues. The third example is to accrue interest. Let's see how accrual accounting can be applied to interest owed but not yet paid. Suppose your business has a loan that accrues $500 in interest every month, but the interest is payable quarterly. Each month, you will record an interest expense of $500 even though the payment is not made until the end of the quarter. For each of the three months in the quarter, the journal entry to record the monthly interest accrual would be, you would debit your interest expense for $500 and you would credit your interest payable for $500. This entry increases the interest expense account reflecting the cost of borrowing money for that month. Simultaneously, it increases the interest payable account, a liability, representing the amount owed but not yet paid. This entry is made each month to recognize the accruing interest expense, adhering to the accrual basis of accounting and the matching principle by matching expenses, which is your interest cost, with the period in which they are incurred. At the end of each quarter, when the interest payment is made, the journal entry to record the payment of the accrual interest would be, you debit your interest payable for $1,500, which represents the three months, and you credit $1,500 to cash. This entry decreases the interest payable account, reflecting the settlement of the owed interest. It also decreases the cash account, reflecting the outflow of cash to pay for the interest. This example illustrates how accrual accounting matches revenue and expenses to the period in which they are earned or incurred, providing a clearer view of a company's financial health and performance. So what are the benefits and challenges of the accrual accounting method? This method offers several benefits, primarily enhancing the accuracy and completeness of a company's financial reporting by recording revenues and expenses when they are earned or incurred, regardless of when the cash transaction occurs, Accrual accounting provides a more realistic view of a company's financial position and performance over a period. This approach also aligns with the matching principle, ensuring that the income and related expenses are recorded in the same accounting period, 
which aids in making more informed decisions based on the true profitability of the company. Also, accrual accounting is essential for businesses that deal with credit transactions, inventory, and long-term contracts, offering a clearer picture of long-term financial health and trends. But the accrual accounting method also presents challenges, particularly for small businesses or startups. It can be more complex and time-consuming to implement and maintain, requiring a solid understanding of accounting principles and meticulous record keeping. This complexity may necessitate hiring experienced accountants, leading to higher operational costs. Additionally, because it records transactions regardless of cash flows, it may not provide an immediate insight into the company's current cash position, potentially complicating short-term financial management and liquidity planning. However, as the business grows, it is probably a good idea to invest in managing those challenges and implement the accrual method of accounting, which will eventually become a requirement. But for now, what is most important is for you to educate yourself on the two methods to be able to make an informed decision on what method to choose. And that is all for today's videos. Remember, accrual accounting isn't just a method, it's a lens through which businesses can forecast their future, strategize their operations, and communicate their financial story. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more insights. Thank you for watching. See you next time.